Mario Kart has been slow to change. Sure, there have been new items added or removed along the way and slight tweaks to the controls, but it's remained steadfast in its adherence to the power-ups crossed with power slides formula. As Nintendo's racer takes a step into a new dimension with Mario Kart 7, it steps into other bold frontiers as well. Have the gambles paid off? There's no story or narrative to bog down Mario Kart 7's design. The only barrier between you and the options is a list of menus. As expected, the Grand Prix provides the majority of single-player entertainment. With three engine classes across eight cups and 32 tracks, it may seem like a lot, but most will be able to finish it in a solid day of play. Plus, half the tracks are reworked classics that most will be at least a little familiar with. If you place gold in all the cups, the mirror option unlocks, allowing you to race through all the courses again with each turn reversed. The solo options are fleshed out by time trials where you can race against Nintendo staff ghosts or those of friends you connect with via Street Pass. You can also play classic balloon battle against the computer on six different courses with plenty of customization or take part in the frantic coin runners option where the winner is decided by who collects the most coins before time expires. <laughs> Multiplayer essentially mirrors that of the Wii iteration, but with 8 players instead of 12. You can either race or battle against folks that you've already added to your 3DS friends list, or random players from around the globe. There's no server list, so you end up joining games at random, but at least you can vote on tracks between races. There's even a Mario Kart channel that helps organize everything and lets you create your own Grand Prix to share. You can also race locally, provided your friends have a copy of the game. <laughs> There are 16 different characters to choose from that become unlocked as you win cups. You can even use your Mii if you like, but all characters have the same abilities. The carts themselves are rated in five different categories that change depending on the chassis and tires you select. These parts are unlocked by collecting in-race coins with a maximum of 10 per outing. With so many ways to progress, you feel like you're always accomplishing something, regardless of where you end up at the finish line. It's about as robust as these types of games get. <laughs> While the design stays the course, Mario Kart 7 represents the biggest departure from gameplay conventions in series history. The most obvious change is the addition of bolt-on parts to the carts. Each machine now includes a propeller for underwater escapades and a set of gliding wings to take to the skies. One is more successful than the other. Gliding imparts a lot of strategy into each race. At various predetermined points, you have the opportunity to drive over a zip pad and go airborne. The risk-reward is different every time you launch. Sometimes it's best to pull back and lose speed to extend flight over dangerous obstacles. Other times, it's better to reunite with the ground as quickly as possible to keep your speed up. It's handled so well that it eventually becomes second nature and feels like a natural part of the Mario Kart experience. The propeller slows the pace down and lacks nuance in the controls that enable experienced players to get an edge. It's rarely used across the entirety of the game, but it just doesn't add anything of value to the experience. The sluggish underwater sections are made more obvious by the ultra-responsive movements when all four wheels are in contact with the tarmac. Power sliding was nerfed in Mario Kart Wii, eliminating the need to wiggle the analog stick to build boost. The same mechanic returns here, which is curious because the rest of the game is definitely not intended for rookies. While the various locomotion techniques are handled well, it means nothing if the tracks don't make adequate use of them. That's definitely not a problem in Mario Kart 7. All three disciplines are woven into the fabric of each course, keeping you guessing as to which you'll utilize next. There are more shortcuts per cup than you'd find in entire Mario Karts in the past. And it's not just about finding them either. Some carry a huge risk with narrow pathways that are tough to navigate, but the valuable seconds you'll shave off your lap time are worth it. Even the 16 retro courses have been intelligently altered to make use of the new bolt-ons, and the selection is on point with some of the greatest tracks in series history, like Koopa Beach. Yeah the new courses are even better and represent a creativity we haven't seen in the series for some time. Music Park has you sliding over piano keys that emit plunking sounds as you pass each one, and another is a glider-heavy downhill affair with just one lap to navigate. Even classics like Rainbow Road have received upgrades as it will undulate and create waves as you come down the home stretch. The final component of the gameplay is the power-ups. Some tend to come and go from one game to the next while the shells and bananas remain. 
It's the same deal here. The windshield obscuring squid has returned from Mario Kart Wii, but there's a slew of new options. The Fire Flower allows you to uncork fireballs as fast as you can squeeze them off for a predetermined time. The Flexible Super Leaf has your cart sprouting a Tanuki Tail for melee or defense, and the ironically named Lucky 7 gives you all the power-ups at once, but other racers can bump into you and steal them. It's a well-rounded roster of items, and none of them feel particularly cheap or unbalance the game. Of course, game balance is always nebulous in Mario Kart thanks to the generous rubber band AI and item distribution. These two elements still rear their ugly heads quite often, and you just have to accept that the best player doesn't always win each race. A well-played lightning bolt can turn things upside down in an instant, and you'll still get nailed by a blue shell 50 yards from the finish line only to watch the entire field pass you. It's a delicate balance between being fair and keeping things unpredictable, and once again the series walks on the right side of the line. It can be more frustrating in multiplayer where the general skill level is higher, but at least latency is practically non-existent. <laughs> The 3DS hasn't exactly shown itself to be a powerhouse on a technical level, but Mario Kart 7 represents its most convincing evangelist. Cut and paste isn't an option here, as there's seemingly something new to see around each and every corner. Track detail isn't an issue either, and overall, it's a colorful, clean-looking game that runs at an impressive clip. While there are certainly some moments where the 3D makes an impact, any slight deviation of the system's viewing angle will make things go blurry. In a driving game, this can be catastrophic. We eventually turned it off and played in 2D. The audio doesn't quite meet the same standard. Many of the age-old sound effects return, along with voice snippets that will eventually wear out their welcome. The music fails to be memorable, despite a beefy selection of happy-go-lucky tunes. Nintendo hasn't recreated the wheel with Mario Kart 7, but the time spent in the garage has paid huge dividends. With a console-worthy list of modes and options, brand new gameplay paradigms, the best track roster in series history, and new customization depth to plumb, it certainly makes a case to be the best Mario Kart yet. It doesn't turn kart racing on its end, but it finds a near-perfect medium of similarity and discovery as it walks the fine line of risk and reward without spinning out.